Who's on it? Who's going first? I want to film somebody while I go behind you. Fuck it. Oh shit. I hope Athena didn't. Oh shit, dude. No, no. Fuck! I think she just fucking hydrated. What's that, lubrication? You gotta have lubrication. Got to have some lubrication. Now. Oh, uh, she's a replay. She got some pretty good ring groove and stuff in it. Some scratches. Yeah. Once I wipe it and hold it in the right light, you'll be able to see it. Oh, I can see it even through the camera, home. Yeah, she took a hard hit. <laughs> look, look at all the beans. Oh, look at all oh. The beans from the piss and yeah, coming apart and stuff. That. And then, like I said, that fine spot right there where oh. like it rocked. Yep, you can see that and too. And then look at you the, see the ring lands. That's from dirt sucking through the air filter. The scratches up there above. Uh -huh. And then when you have a ring groove, I mean that's all dirt debris getting in through the intake. When you get Ooh. a ring groove and all those scratches up here. Yep. So, yep, replay time. Replay time. Okay, KP. Sorry, homie. <laughs> She's going to get off a little shipment here. Hey, 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 folks. Sorry for the background noise we got there. Um, I'm keeping warm. It's bloody cold outside today. Um, I just want to take a quick minute. We're getting ready, uh, getting our parts ready to build um, Kalani's motor probably this Saturday. That's my goal is this Saturday. And I wanted to go over a couple of quick things when you're building your motor that you need to do. Uh, many times people when they buy a piston kit like this beautiful Athena piston kit and they buy everything together they make the assumption that the piston is the right diameter that the cylinder is the right diameter and the rings are the right diameter and you should just be able to put it together and put it in the motor but I'm here to tell you that's not a very good idea to do you need to check and make sure that your clearances are correct now, uh, for the Athena 290 kit, I believe Thumper Racer, Thumper Racing 280 kit, uh, standard uh, WR, you want to have at least one and a half thousandths clearance between the cylinder and the piston. And um, there's lots of ways to use micrometers and stuff, but a lot of people don't have those tools. So I'm going to show you the easy, quick, redneck way to do it that's very good. What you do is you take your Harbor Freight feeler gauges. This is a one and a half thousandth feeler gauge. Sorry for those of you who just work in millimeters. I'm sure you can do the math. And what you do is you take this and you slide it down inside your cylinder like this. Just line it up inside. Then you take your piston. And uh, by the way, pistons are oblong. They're not round. The ring lands, which are this part of the rings right here, are always smaller in diameter than the piston. The skirt, meaning the front and back, the skirt part of the piston is always the largest. So that's where you want to measure. You slide your feeder gauge down into the cylinder like this, and you slide your piston down in, and you should be able to move your piston down like this. Should should not take much effort to fall right through should be that way on the top and the bottom. Sometimes I'll turn the piston upside down. We'll do this in the front so you can see. Feeler gauge goes in. You just slide your piston down there. Make sure it can go up and down. You can see I can move it. It's not too tight. Now, 
if you want, you can put the two thousandths and check that. Um, there we are. That's 0 0.05 millimeters. You can check that. You don't want to force anything. This one's eh, a little tight, so it's about one and a half. So make sure you check that before you have everything ready for assembly. Next quick thing is your ring end gap. People make the mistake of thinking that their rings are gapped from the factory, that they're going to fit perfect. And what I need to tell you is this little gap right here that you can see between the ring ends, when you put that in the cylinder, they'll come together. If the ring gap is too tight and you have not clearanced it correctly, what will happen is it will bind in the cylinder and it will break the top of the ring land off the piston, um, break into pieces and destroy your motor. So rule of thumb is you want to have four thousandths clearance between the ring end gap for every one inch of bore. So this, since this is a little over three inches of bore, we need to have three times four is twelve, so we want to have twelve to thirteen thousandths clearance. The way you do it, you simply take your ring, you kind of put it inside your bore, then you take your piston and you gently push it down part way to make sure it's nice and flat, not cockeyed in the cylinder. That lines it up good, and then you simply take your feeler gauges and you measure the gap. I've already done this on this cylinder. I've made 13 thousandths clearance at the ring end gap. Woo. And then uh, you want to do that on every ring. Make sure that you check all of them. 13 thousandths for this cylinder for your own. Just calculate four thousandths clearance for every inch of bore. Then what you do is you take a fine jeweler's file and you gently file the edges on about a 45 degree angle or so on every edge of every ring so you don't have any burrs or anything that could get caught up or scratch. You want them free moving and you do that with every one of your rings. Then you know that you'll have the proper clearances, nothing will bind up, you'll have appropriate amount of space for things to expand and contract. Never install a piston, a new piston, in a cylinder without checking your side clearance and checking your ring end gap. If you do that without it and you know maybe everything you'll get lucky and everything will be fine but a lot of times uh, you won't be lucky. So anyway getting ready to motor forward with this. Hopefully uh, we'll get it going on Saturday. Much love everybody.